Robin Hood. The animal kingdom has its own version of Robin Hood legends, the tales of the English hero of the common people, whose adventures were first sung by medieval minstrels. Alan Adale, a sweet-voiced rooster who was Robin Hood's favorite singer, presents their version. One fine spring day, Robin Hood, a clever fox, and Little John, a large bear, were walking through Sherwood Forest dressed from top to toe in Lincoln Green. All the members of Robin's merry band wore Lincoln Green and lived in Sherwood Forest as outlaws. Yet they were beloved by the country people because none ever came to Robin in time of need and went away empty-handed. Now the times were troubled because good King Richard had gone off on the Third Crusade, leaving his brother, Prince John, a scrawny and tyrannical lion, to rule England. Prince John's chief advisor was Sir Hiss, a wily snake, and between the two of them they had put a heavy burden of taxes on the poor people. This fine spring day, Prince John's entourage was making its way through Sherwood Forest, on the way to Nottingham to tax the people there. As Prince John said to Hiss, Rob the poor to feed the rich, am I right, counselor? And he and Sir Hiss chuckled gleefully as they fondled the bags of gold they had already collected. Robin Hood and Little John saw the entourage in the distance, and Little John asked, Are we the good guys or the bad guys? You know, out robbing the rich to feed the poor. But Robin Hood corrected him. Rob is a naughty word. We never rob. We just borrow a bit from those who can afford it. And then he pointed to the royal coach. And here comes another collection day for the poor. The two outlaws quickly slipped into disguises as gypsy fortune tellers and ran ahead to the side of the road. When the royal coach passed, they offered to tell Prince John his fortune. Cleverly, Robin Hood and Little John flattered the prince in a very short time, they had tricked him out of his jewels, his money bags, and even the royal robes. Then off they scampered into the depths of Sherwood Forest, loaded down with their loot. Prince John was furious upon discovering that he had been tricked, and when he arrived at Nottingham, he wanted revenge. His helpless subjects paid dearly for his humiliation. He taxed the heart and soul out of the poor people of Nottingham, and if they couldn't pay, they were carted off to jail. But most of all, Prince John wanted to catch that scalawag Robin Hood and punish him. He told the Sheriff of Nottingham, a villainous wolf, to announce an archery tournament with the first prize a golden arrow and a kiss from his niece, Maid Marian, a beautiful vixen. Prince John knew that Robin Hood had loved Marion a long time ago before he became an outlaw, and he was sure that such a prize would lure Robin out of his hiding place. <clears throat> Nottingham was a fair sight on the day of the archery match. All along the green meadow outside the town walls stretched rows of benches for people of rank and quality. At the end of the range near the target was a raised platform bedecked with ribbons, pennants, and a garland of flowers for the prince, Maid Marian, and the royal party. The poor folk sat or lay upon the green grass near the railing that kept them off the archery range. The very best archers of Merry England had come to this shooting match, and they gathered in the great tent, inspecting their bows and arrows, and talking of good shots they had made in their day. The sheriff looked about for Robin Hood, but he did not see him among the archers. He is too big a coward to appear, he thought. But the sheriff was mistaken. Robin, who was one of the best archers in England, would not have missed this tournament for all the world. He and his merry men were there in various disguises, mingling with the crowd. Some were friars, some beggars, some peasants. Robin himself was a stork, while Little John got himself dressed up as the Duke of Chutney and sat on the royal platform at Prince John's left hand. The tournament had narrowed down to two contestants, the Sheriff of Nottingham and a talkative stork who spoke every time the Sheriff was about to make his shot. Listen, Scissor Bill, if you shoot half as good as you blabbermouth, you're better than Robin Hood, said the irritated Sheriff. He's scared of me, that's why he didn't show up today. Then the Sheriff shot his last arrow 
and it went straight into the bull's eye. He was certain he had won the contest, but the stork had one more arrow, and drawing his trusty bow, he loosed the string. The arrow flew so true, it knocked the sheriff's arrow off the target and lodged dead in the center of the bullseye. The stork confidently strode up to the royal platform to receive his prize, but Prince John knew there was only one archer in all the land who could shoot like that. He tapped the stork on each shoulder with his sword, causing the disguise to fall away. I sentence you to instant and immediate death, Robin Hood, proclaimed Prince John. The sheriff and the executioner seized the outlaw and bound him without, with stout ropes. Maid Marion pleaded for his life in vain, and all of his friends were in despair, when suddenly the prince said, Let him go! Little John, as the Duke of Chutney, had quietly put his knife to the prince's back and forced him to withdraw his soul orders. The merry men of Sherwood came forward out of the crowd and battled with the royal guards. In the confusion, Robin escaped with Maid Marion, they made their way to the hiding place deep in Sherwood Forest, and when all the band was together again, the forest rang with their songs and laughter as they waited for the day when good King Richard would return to England and reclaim the throne from his unjust brother. Once again, an enraged Prince John, advised by Sir Hiss, punished the people with taxes four times greater than before. Soon the prisons were filled with poor people unable to pay. Among them, Robin's friend, kindly Friar Tuck, a badger. Once again, hoping to lure Robin Hood out into the open, the prince set a trap. He announced that he would hang the good friar for treason the next morning. Secretly, he hoped it would prove to be a double hanging, for surely Robin would come to Nottingham to save his friend, and this time they would be ready for him. Robin and Little John stole into the town late at night, a jailbreak is the only chance he's got, Robin Hood decided. Silently, Little John crept up behind the sentry, who had just called out the time, and is all is well. Little John pulled him over the castle wall, where Robin Hood took his keys and donned his uniform. They tiptoed past the Sheriff of Nottingham, who was snoozing at the prison gate, and in short order they unlocked all the barred doors and freed the villagers who were imprisoned. I'll just drop in on the treasury for good measure, Robin said. He tossed a hook and rope to the balcony of Prince John's bedchamber and shimmied his way up. From the balcony he shot an arrow attached to a rope through a prison window where Little John waited. Little John threaded the rope through an iron ring and it shot back to Robin Hood, making a perfect double clothesline and pulley. Then Little John sat back to wait for the fun. Cautiously, Robin Hood entered Prince John's chambers, where the prince and Sir Hits were snoring in their beds. Bags of gold were everywhere, even under the prince's pillow. Robin stealthily removed them one by one to the balcony. There he fastened them to the clothesline, and Little John then reeled them towards himself at the window of the jail. Friar Tuck helped pull the bags in, chuckling, praise the Lord, and pass the tax rebate. Soon all of the freed villagers were loaded down with gold. Led by Little John and Briar Tuck, they marched out of the jail in the first dawn's first light past the empty gallows that Robin Hood had helped them to cheat. Robin took the last two bags of gold, leapt from the balcony off the cloak to the clothesline, and rode off on it. Sir Hiss and Prince John awakened just as Robin fled, and Sir Hiss tried to recapture the last bag of gold. When he pulled at it, it split open, showering coins on the villagers below, who happily ran off with them. The prince and Sir Hiss were strung out on the clothesline, screaming for help. Their cries alerted the guards, who charged after Robin, but he was too fast and clever for them. Meanwhile, little John, the friar, and the villagers clambered into a two-wheeled cart and crossed the drawbridge just in time. Robin Hood held off the guards and then dived from the palace wall into the moat, where no one dared follow him. It was a time of narrow escapes and wild excitement, not soon forgotten in the town of Nottingham. But all's well that ends well. King Richard, a lion-hearted lion, returned from the crusade and set his kingdom straight. Maid Marian and Robin Hood were married. The king joked that he had an outlaw for an in-law, 
and they went to live quietly and lawfully in Sherwood Forest. And as for Prince John, Sir Hiss, and the Sheriff of Nottingham, they found a new home too, in the Nottingham prison.